Hello and welcome to The Debrief with Dave O'Neill and about to do a gig with Ed Edmonds. I'm pretending we haven't done the gig. Um, so <laughs> stay tuned. I've got to go and pick her up and, you know, uh, maybe I'll meet Lloyd Langford. Anything could happen. Um, anyway, we go to do a gig. Ah, we've made it. <laughs> we did a gig. We're on the road. We did a gig in uh, Romsey. Mmm, yep. Now we're driving in the dark through the bush with microphones. <laughs> yeah, it's not ideal. <laughs> For Tom Gleason's school. It was. It was a good gig, I thought. Oh, you were so funny. You were the oh, funniest. God. No, come on. Come on. Hey, come Gleason's on. pretty funny. He's funny. Jesus. Hard to, always hard, hard to, to be pop. on with Gleason. Oh. That routine about the electric cars. I know. I felt like that was new as well. I was like, oh, you fucker. It's funny yeah. and it's new. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Great. But you were funny. Um, there's something about your big bum. That's very funny. <laughs> and, um, yeah, but there was a lot of people there. Yeah, and, we had a heckler. Well, I did. Oh, that, and I've got to say, that, that was one of the, the best I've heard for a while. Yeah, it was pretty good. So what happened? So I was asking... Um, who's single, which I yes. knew, so Romsey, for, if you don't know, is a very, it's an hour out of Melbourne, it's a tree change kind of, yes. like, sort of place, it's all, fa- it's families, isn't it? It's all families. So, already the question, are you single, was, you know, a long shot, and there was one woman who said yes, and I, you know, I was getting, got into it with her, you know, why is, why she is, was quite vocal. She, she was very vocal. She sounded happy. She was like, I'm, you know, I'm the only, I'm the only person in town that's single, Back and forward, single, single, single. She kept piping up. She it wasn't did. all me. I wasn't going her. No. And then I said one more time, oh, you know, the single person will know. And then she yelled out, I'm a widow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a widow. Oof. She is. Hello. Yeah, and the whole crowd goes, oh, my God. And she's like, it was three years ago. Oh, it was it three years ago? Yes, what she said. Yeah, yeah. But you handled it very well. Well, I said, oh, because, of course, the audience went, ooh, yeah, like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I'm in trouble here. And I said to them, well, it's not my fault. I didn't kill him. That's right. You just got to stick to your guts. You double down on it. Yeah. Which is what, what you've got to do. Because I always panic when that stuff. Oh, everyone panics. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like when Tom Gleeson, he got a beauty too. Like, you saw about electric cars and he goes, oh, yeah. why, don't, why don't you guys have electric cars? And he's more just like, that, we're poor. <laughs> But as he said, work harder. He said work harder? Just work harder. You can get to where I am. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's so, uh, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Right. It was like in the school hall. Good yeah, setup. Right. Good, um, you know. Good times. Good times. So, you've been busy. Um, I can't remember when I first met you. God. Well, you know, of course, I've told you this before, that yeah. I was a big fan of your... Also, Booko. Also, Booko on the, um, Triple on Triple R. R. And I used to come as a... What would I have been? How old were you? I reckon I would have been 19, 18 or 19. There weren't many 19 year old girls coming to Osso Book Coach. Oh, really? <sighs> but I I had a group of mates. So we were all in uni. We were probably in like first year uni. And I had a solid group of mates, you know, yeah, that I met through uni that were all into Osso Booko. And they were, <laughs> they were all my age. <laughs> so we used to love it. And yeah. my sister loved it too. So it was a show with Vic Plume. Yeah. And then uh, Alan Parks. Parks, man! But it was mainly me and Vic <laughs> over the years. And how how long did you do it for? Oh, God, about eight years, I reckon. Yeah. Like, we were on a Sunday on Triple R, which yeah, is a right. community station. Yeah. And um, we used to do sketches. So fun. Fine pranks. Yeah. Back uh, when you could prank. Oh, you could eat. In yeah. the glory but we, days. But we never rang hospitals or No, police. I know. We rang pizza shops and yeah, the, the classics. You know, all that. Yeah. We had fun, but yeah, I loved it. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> Vic made friends with the listeners and then, like, remember Bandicoot? I do remember Bandicoot. Bandicoot! Bandicoot! <laughs> so he was like, 
I mean, Vic was a biographer. Bandicoot was like a... Yeah. But Vic was a stand-up, a great stand-up. Yeah. But Bandicoot was just like some random guy living in Tyab or something. Yeah, yeah. And he just like had a big beard and he was a little guy and he... I don't know what he did. I think he worked... But he was always living in one... He, he, he lived for a while in a shed <laughs> on the Tyab airport. <laughs> <laughs> The last I heard of him, he was living on a boat. So. Yeah, right. But he, he, do, would, he doesn't like to live in conventional places. No, no, but that show attracted a lot of unconventional yeah, people. Yeah, yes. Still yeah. this day when I go and do, not a lot, but I did, what did I do the other day? Lingapa. And there were guys there with a cassette tape because you put cassette oh, tapes Oh, that's out. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and. He had them. Look, I'd love to get my hands on one of them. Oh, we've got one at home partner found one but we but the thing was you know what it was like it was like podcasts are now yes yeah it was like a cult thing yeah so we would do a live show and you get like two or three hundred people mm. but if you did like a comedy show like tonight with a mainstream audience there'd be one person there yes that would know you. yeah 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 so yeah. it's very i felt like because we're doing this podcast it's very similar to podcasts yeah it's very niche triple r was uh. well, we didn't have fun we didn't do anything to make comedy so we had to get on public radio yeah my favourite character was a, a character called Crab Man. Crab Man. <laughs> <laughs> and he used to be like... Oh, I can't remember Crab Man. Well, if, if the setup would be like, you know, I don't know if it was you or Vic, but it'd be probably, probably me. both of you. All. And you're in a, you'd be in a, a pub or something. <laughs> and, um, you know, just be having a beer or whatever, and then you'd hear like scuttle, scuttle. You go, hang on a minute, that's not a man, that's a crab. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we had a very good touch of the surreal. That you was, did. That was a lot of the rickety rocket man. That was just bizarre. Rickety it was... rocket man. It <laughs> was just bizarre shit going that's on. That's why I loved it. That's why I think it, it appealed to my younger yeah. mates. There was a bit of Mighty Boosh, yes, pre Mighty Boosh going and, uh, on. And I, I'd say Mighty Python, but we were too young for Mighty Python. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we'd seen it, but we we were a bit, but, and also um, we were more the young ones. And all that oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just what yeah, else going on. So um, funny. I so the, the other character, Chopper and Macca, were the Bogan characters. Chopper <laughs> and Macca. I guess they met their rich cousins. Um, oh, they had their cousins from Byron Bay called Chopper and Smacker. <laughs> they would come down and live with. Yeah, uh, and, and you always used to go, I'll guess the secret sound, and it was always a beer opening. That's <laughs> big guess. <laughs> and music to rock the old. So, Vic, where's Vic? Vic's living in a van on the river. Oh, nice. It's like a, I don't know if he's with Bandicoot. You really need to get on a, a you know, live in something that moves. Yes. Vic. What happened with Vic? So he stopped doing comedy. Ah, uh, what a shame. He moved, he always wanted to move to a hotter climate. Right. So he always wanted to move to, so he moved to Coffs. Oh, yep. And I'm pretty sure he, he bought a house somewhere and then sold it. And he's living in, out of his van somewhere. Okay. Well, big shout out if he's listening. Yeah, yeah. Do you think mate, he's listening? Probably not. No. Nah. No. Um, <laughs> I think Vic, he was so, his, as my partner, who of course was around, yes, um, then she was a, she was originally part of the team. She used to do some. Of the oh voices. right. She did. She did. Um, she could, was good at accents. Because she did. Ah. I'm making your fever tonight, Ross. Oh, Rose Coat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making your fever tonight, Ross. That was her. And um, and so she always said Vic was the fun, one of the funniest person she ever saw. Uh. As you know. The funniest people in comedy often give up. Yes. For whatever reason. Very true. Yeah. Whether it was drugs or alcohol or just yeah, depression. Of, depression and or just talk. told the person to the wrong person to, to fuck off yes. so many times. <laughs> there was a bit of that in Vic, but he he would stick at jobs for a while and then he, yeah he was in the full frontal cast. Ah, okay. Was channel ten for a bit. Yeah, nice. He was very. He was a natural talent. Man. Very but, funny. Um, he just um, drifted off. Good. And probably much happier for it. Yeah, and as we know, um, some of the worst people stick at it and yeah. become successful. <laughs> yeah. So you just go, why did Vic Parksman? Yeah, was, I know. Parksman was hilarious too, but they're just like, yeah. I thought I was the least funniest one out of all of them, but I just, I had come from a more stable background, basically. Yes. And um, they were real, well, I always say I'm working class, but they were real working class. Yeah, guys. right. Yeah. And, you know, I went to uni. They didn't go to uni. Mm, yeah. You know, they kind of had more, more of that. Had done 
manual labour jobs. Kind yeah. Of, where I never, I did that part time. You've I, got soft hands. I've got soft hands, and they had worked in tough jobs. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, mm. and often if you're not, if you're from a real blue collar background, coping with the comedy industry. Oh is yeah, hard. totally. It's better if you. When Vic wrote, we went on a full frontal together, and Vic quit that. And he goes, it's like everyone in that rise room has been to uni. I said, no, not all of them have. No. He goes, yeah, but they, they look like they have. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. They did, they did all look like they'd been to uni. Yeah. They actually have it, some of them. Well, comedy now, you have to be very... Um, business minded. Business minded, yeah. Yeah, a technology. Which in. doesn't go hand in hand with naturally funny, often. No. <laughs> and often, those often the opposite. Collar, those blue collar people are often the fun. Yeah, funny. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, when I probably, so when I would have met you, like as an open mic car, yeah, like at Spleen or somewhere, yeah. I, I was, I was starstruck. You mean all? I was like, here's. I hey. remember, now you know, I remember talking to you at Soft Belly. Ah, uh, we Soft Belly. On those chairs, and you were saying I was an Osso Booker fan. I remember saying to you, I never saw any young women at gigs, <laughs> but honestly, all just like bandicoot and hard and like blokes and. <laughs> yeah, that's as, right. Soft it, belly. It wasn't as bad as who was that comic when he was walking to a gig in America? Who's that guy, Doug? Doug Stanhope. Yeah, he was walking towards his, his show and he saw all these people on the on the footpath and his mate, his squad goes, "We should cross the road. That looks dangerous." He goes, "There, there are warnings. We're going to go in." <laughs> but also, Booker wasn't that bad. But it was good because of Triple R. Yes. I, mean, I loved. I listened. Up to oh, okay. And I loved it because I loved alternative music. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's why I gravitated towards it. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Vic, I mean, I was in charge of music because Vic always just wanted to play the Angels. I'm like, hey, <laughs> this is too hard. Huh? We're going to play like the early models. We're going to do this bit alternative. Yeah. Cure. It's not, He's like, oh, fuck it's that. It's not time for little river bands. <laughs> it's not time for. But yeah, that's um, mm. great memories. Great yeah. Because like, then I went on to do breakfast on Triple R. Oh, yes. So I was like, they often used to choose their breakfast people from other shows. other shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And that's yeah. where you met Kate, Kate. and Sam Pang, or just Kate? No, Sam Pang. But he was later. I met him at Triple R functions. Yeah, when, oh, I was, right. when I'd left, but I used to see him around absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Tony Wilson and people like that. And, yeah, um, cool. And um, and um, um, it was, uh, you know, Kate used to ring up. What her thing was. We'd be live on air and she'd ring up. We'd do a phone prank, right? Say, so we ran out the museum and then she came on air and said, I need to speak to you. I'm quite happy to go on air. I'm from the museum. <laughs> I'm the lawyer. We're going to sue you, boys. And we're like, Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> and we're live on air. She's going, Yes. Because she's got an accent. Yeah, she's yeah, like yeah. Really, and we're shitting ourselves. <laughs> Unless you just start laughing. Go, it's Kate from Breakfast. And I'm like, oh, Fuck it, okay. <laughs> she used to prank us live on air. She used to make us a shit out of uh, I miss pranking. God, it was a good time. In oh. fact, I spent, used to spend hours pranking. Oh, did you? Back in the day. What? You're just, you know, rigging up, mu- you know, movies, any, you know. Oh, love a prank. It. We loved it. Yeah, it's good. Absolutely. Nothing funnier than trying to not laugh while you're on a prank. <laughs> I've been Even to this day, when I hear a good phone prank, have you heard the India one where the guys ring up the top back? This is, I don't know who they were, but they, they rang up an AM station in Sydney for a quiz. And every time we got asked a question, they'd say India. Oh, right. And so we're going on a real roll. So he goes, Who was the president of the United States in 1956? Yeah, I know this one, Neil. I know it. India. Oh, like, yeah. He's like, No, no, that's. And the guy gets in. It's on YouTube. He gets increasingly angrier, <laughs> and then just obviously just some random people started ringing up saying it. Just to, <laughs> it is very funny. Right? Uh, yeah. But you know, uh, mm. I don't know. Have you ever been victim to a prank? Uh, well, take it on, take it on the chin. I reckon. Take it on the chin. I I used to work at Melbourne University. I went there, surprisingly. And then I got a job there. <laughs> That's where. Yeah, yeah. You're one of those people who just hung around. Yeah. Well, I thought like, this is pretty crazy. Like the activities officer. Yeah. Or some former student. So I had access access to the letterhead, and I wrote really cruel in hindsight. My mate was doing teaching at Melbourne Uni, <laughs> not and, and not you know not studying much or whatever. And I wrote her an official letter from the university, kicking her out. Oh, that's fantastic. And though. she came and like, and the worst bit was she turned to me with it and read it back to me like. <laughs> Word for word. It's like, what am I going to do? And I was like, oh, gotcha. <laughs> she was like, oh. Well, I don't look, yeah, that's funny, though. 
but also you knew her. I remember yeah. um, they did a prank. Steve Bedwell was on South Australian Radio, mm -hmm. and they did a prank where they rang up William Shakespeare, who had oh. a hit in the 70s with My Little Angel. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. That's a long time ago. And they said they were from a record company. They got to re-sign him and put him on tour and everything. Oh, no. Yeah, it was, and, and then they rang him up the next day and wanted to interview him. And they said, so what's been going on? Well, actually, very good news. Oh. Um, I'm just going to be signed. And they said, no, that was us. Gotcha. Woo. You know what I reckon the trick with pranks is you've got to go from bad to butch. Like, you've got to be like, you kicked out of uni. No, you're not. Yeah. Not, not you've won a car. No, you haven't. Yeah, it's true. It's got to be like it's got to be, be a, a good relief relationship. Yeah, yeah, outcome. Result. Result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah that's right. the trick. That's so true. <laughs> anyway, you've had a you've had a good career. I mean, you did. You know, you did. Um... Is it over? <laughs> Is it over? You're no. going to drop me somewhere at Mel <laughs> <Yeah>. Melbourne <laughs> Airport go, you've had a good career. Yeah, no, to get out. I'm going to tell Lloyd that, uh, yeah, no, she's, I had a chat her in the car. She's got a meat yeah. She's got to nail the Brisbane scene. There's no comedy up there. <laughs> get up there. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm from Strathmore, but I say I'm from Essendon. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. Strathmore. That's where Glenn Robbins is from. I know. Isn't that weird? Adam Rosenbach. Yep, yep. Yeah, Glenn um, Robbins. Yep, no, and Adam. First off, I did their um, footy club. Not, uh, oh, Strathmore Football oh Club. God. My dad was the chairman of that for oh a little my while. Oh, God. I did their old, like, guys my age. And, boy, it was rough. Yeah, it's rough. It's <laughs> still rough there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, I, mean, I was saying before, at the gig, there was, like, a float in the Mardi Gras talent. You know, yeah, like, well, I wasn't on it, but no, some... <laughs> but men dressed up as Helen didn't get any money. No, uh... exactly. <laughs> no, I mean that's great. Yeah, I mean it was incredible that character. It was, um, and I, I'm still like she's still in the, she's still no, there. Don't bring her back. I'll probably bring her back. Don't yeah, unbelievable. That's your point yeah. of fruiter, right? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's your uncle Arthur. Yeah. You, you, that that character should have its own TV show. I know. Well, you did a live show, didn't you? I did no. a live show of her. Yeah, with Sam Campbell. <laughs> Sam Campbell, he's so funny. <laughs> he was my son in the show, yeah. and I just sort of beat, beat, him, so beat him down all night and long. And who was your husband? That was um, uh, Oliver Clark. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, Simon. Simon, that's yeah. right, Simon. Simon. I just think I think women love. I think my wife loved it so much because she, she would unhinged. Yeah, that's right. And have a breakdown. Which yeah. Is, people can relate to that. that kind well, of. it's sort of, especially at the moment, everyone's sort of, you know, like Instagram culture, everyone's got a yeah. smile on their yeah. face. But you scratch under the surface and everyone's oh. just about to snap. <laughs> <laughs> There's shit going on. There's a lot of shit going on. Down. Everyone's too busy to, you know, everyone's up to their eyeballs in debt. Busy's become a currency. It's like, I'm so busy. I'm trying to stand, I just try to stand up about it. It's so true. Nah. It's so busy. Yeah, a woman said to me yesterday, because you live in Fairfield, right? Clifton Hill, near Fairfield. Oh, I thought yeah. you were in Fairfield. No, I'm Clifton Hill. Um, ah. I don't know, this story doesn't make any no, sense. No, go on. And but people think I live in Fairfield because I run the gig at the pub there. Yeah, right. People always think I live in Fairfield. Well, it's weirdly, a woman said to me, I, 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 live in, I used to live in Fairfield. I hated the people there. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. I live not far from there. I said, oh, what? Why? People are fine in Fairfield. I know. It was, it was really odd. I said, where have you moved to? And she said, Ivanhoe. I'm like, oh. oh well, yeah. I go, oh, what, with the well, BMW mums? And she goes, yeah, but Fairfield, they're, a- they're all angry in Fairfield because oh. none of them can afford the houses they've bought. Oh, okay. She reckons that everyone's up to their eyeballs in debt in Fairfield. Absolutely. But Ivanhoe would be the same. I would have thought so. But people an that interesting... don't know, Ivanhoe's a poshest suburb. Yeah. Because I always say when I do the pub in Fairfield, anyone from Ivanhoe? Uh, yeah. Have you still got that toll gate stopping, um, you know, immigrants coming through and so <laughs> Unless they're a doctor, they can go through. That's fine. Yeah. It's very white, Ivanhoe. Very. So it was, very a, it was a very strange conversation to me. But anyway. Ivanhoe, uh, was she posh herself? Or? No. No, she looked more like she belonged in Fairfield, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. If you're listening, big shout out. Nice to meet you in the, <laughs> nice to meet you in the park. <laughs> Uh, we have random conversations in the park, though. Yeah, you do with kids. Oh, you get forced. Please. It's like dogs. You get forced together. Oh, and also your kids make friends with the worst. No, oh, I know. So I remember going around to like my oldest son. And he's like, oh, I've got to go. And, like, he, and I'd go pick him up, and then and the parents are playing Michael Bublé. Not ironically, they're just like, we love oh Bublé. man. Like, there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of parent politics. In the park, like where you, yes. like, because you know, kids, toddlers hit each other, and that's fine, like, it's part of them growing up or whatever. But I feel like as a parent, you gotta get, you gotta get involved and go, oh no, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. There's a lot in the park I find of a kid punching Gwen and the parent just kind of looking on sadistically. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Heaps. And the parents, so you're in the inner, you're near me in the inner north. Yeah, Are they yeah. Friendly though in the park, they talk to you. The Some of them, and some of them are. Yeah. One of my friends moved to Kew, which is, again, oh, a yes. posh area. Yeah. He said, no one talks to you. Really? No. It's like no. head down. No. Yeah, I just find that, like, because I, I don't mind the punching, because I think that's what kids do. Yeah. But I feel like you've got to make a token effort to go, no, oh, no, come on. Come on. Don't do that. You know, we're going to go home if you can, or something. But yeah. some parents just go, yeah, cop it, sweet, you no, know. That's weird. Mm. That's weird. Yeah, so I punch them in that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I remember my son was like pushed up a slide or something like that. Oh. And the woman said to me, "He's not in childcare, is he?" Your son? I'm like, "No, he's not. Mm. He's not used to the rough and tumble." No, that's no. Like, uh, 
passing the buck. Yeah. Mm. I remember once when our kids were really little and they were just like about three days. I didn't know any, I didn't know these guys at all, just down the park. It was like Sunday morning at nine and one of the dads just said, remember we used to have sex, guys? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> just, out <of> <laughs> just out of the blue. They didn't know him at all. He was <laughs> 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 having a deep thing to himself. Remember that? Yeah, okay. Oh, well. Oh, well. You've got a Put it behind you. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Gwen's two. Wins two. Oh. She's two in a week, yeah. That's funny, your routine about Lloyd, how you trapped him. Yeah, I got him. Got yeah, him. poor Lloyd, he's stuck in. Well, he got he came here at the big, very beginning yeah. of the first co... Well, he arrived, yeah, he arrived in January and we were both in Adelaide in March doing the fringe and that's when COVID hit. I don't know if you were at that Adelaide fringe, but it just became oh. evident... Within the space of four days, everything was gone. <laughs> oh, you remember Like on that. the Friday, everyone was like, oh, yeah. So 2020? 2020. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Friday, we were all like, oh, I guess, no, it should be all right. Keep doing your show. I remember show. my last gig was in March in Canberra for um, the Defence Academy. Oh, uh, yeah. Soldiers. Was like, do your show tonight. It should be fine. By the next day, it was like, don't do your show. And by the Monday, it was like, get home ASAP. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, bad. pretty bad. Yeah. So anyway, so then Lloyd and I... Lloyd was stuck here because uh, in order to, he couldn't leave, no, for a while he wasn't allowed to leave the country and then the problem was because he wasn't an Australian citizen or oh, yeah. permanent resident. If he left the country, they would never have let him back in. Yeah, right. So he was trapped um, and then I got pregnant and he was really trapped yeah. then because he couldn't go anywhere. Oh, well, he likes it here. Though, he loves it here. Good yeah, he loves it here. Welsh, Welsh, British Welsh people, they just love it here. Yeah, yeah. I think he, I think the laid backness of it here it suits him, his personality. And yeah, he's laid back. I yeah. just remember being at the pub talking to a British couple, and there was another British couple walking along here, and then they said, Oh, yeah, we're going back to England. And the British couple that was sitting there said, You're going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> You're going the wrong way. It's so true. Well, I mean, I've we've spent a bit of time in London, it's full on. And you, I guess once you have kids as well, uh, it's like with kids, I it's like little kids. And you, well, if you know what you've had in Australia and what you could have, yeah. it's hard to justify it, really. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, be, you know, beach park. Yeah. Clean air. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sun's out. Good food. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like London can be good. You have to have a lot of money. To live you do there. to live there well. Yeah. I just remember when the Hills, the Adam Hills, moved there with his wife, and they had small kids, and after a while, she's went. Oh, so hey, fair back. enough. Well, yeah. You can totally. stay in, you do your TV show. I'm not going on. 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 i am not going on i am not going on i am not I, I didn't know you had questions. I oh, know, they're just like, I've got on the internet about what. I see one of these questions. They're just about the gig. What went well tonight and why? What did you feel went well in your, in your gig? Was it well, I think like because, you? so I, as I said on the way up here, I hadn't done stand up for five months because I, I did a musical. Um, oh, I've got to talk about that. Yeah. So, um, Bloom, um, Bloom. Bloom. Which was oh, set in the aged care yeah, home. Yeah, that looked great. It was great. It was an amazing experience. And you were um, the lead, weren't you? One of the yeah, leads. yeah. I was, a, I was the evil woman that ran the home, and oh, like, really? it was pinching pennies. I was the villain, which I enjoyed. I like that role. And so, Frankie J, what was he? In Frankie the... J was one of the old people in the home. Yeah, yeah like, you know. Get a job, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> but it was oh, written by Tom Gleisner. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's in a, his spare time. Yeah. Oh God, what's he doing? Emerges <laughs> from lockdown with a musical. The rest of his. Well, sat he's, around. he's always loved musicals, though, hasn't he? Yeah, Come I think on. so. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so with that in mind, I was pretty... I went out on, I think, Wednesday and tried to do a stand-up gig and, you know, so I thought, oh, my God. Like, I agreed to do this for time months ago and um, I was pretty worried, actually. I didn't know. So, my favourite part of the gig was... So, I was, I was really, like, just drilling through the material yeah, trying to yeah, remember yeah, it. Yeah, then yeah. I got heckled by that woman <laughs> and that was my favourite part of the gig because then yeah, I was like... Funny. I was like, oh, yeah, I can do this. Like, yeah. I, I know how to do this. Yeah, like, that was funny. Yeah, so that to me was, and then I felt loose and fine. And what didn't go well? It didn't not go well. 
I didn't think my I I was not um, very present in the first half of it. Oh, I, okay, yeah. I was yeah. trying to remember the stuff. It can. <laughs> it can happen. Like, yeah, I was just like, oh, I was just a bit worried, and you never stand up. You don't want to be worried ever. Well, that's it. And often you're on stage and you go, I go to that ironing when I get home. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm meant to be here. Yeah. 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 Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And with any um, organisational hazards have gone the way. In terms of organisation, it's pretty well organised. No, I was. I thought it was a mate. Well, you're always you're always going to be in safe hands if there's a comedian that's been yes. involved in organising. Tom ran a very good so because you know you know as a comic what what, what the like hell you've been into. through oh. in the corner of a room with a amp or oh. whatever it is. We've done them all. So no, I didn't think so. Like it was no, all yeah. You know, even there was a nice back. Sometimes they don't even give you a backstage. No. Just like just stand over there. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Stand with the people. <laughs> yeah, no. So I think because Tom was on it, it was it was good. There wasn't any, you know. Sometimes as well as the, at those sort of corporate or charity gigs, you can get a very long um, introduction. That's yes. Sometimes they read about something Wikipedia very page. sad or yeah, yeah. You know. Or they get up and talk about the school. Yes, and I think yeah. obviously Tom would be like, "Nah, no, I'll no. get up." Do some jokes, bring them on. Yeah, he's so funny. So funny. Oh, what a funny man. Uh, unreal. Uh, and and uh, my last question: How can we do better next time? I would have loved to have an ice cream, actually. I, 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 they offered me, they offered me a waffle, but I was oh. conscious that you wanted, you no, might. I, have, I, I could hang around. Well, I know, but the problem I felt was going to happen was you had to drive, and I would yeah. have been here getting into a waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you just would have been fasting. full of resentment. Yeah, fine. She's got a waffle. She can barely waffles speak. waffles are the things that you never have really had. I know, I love, I love waffles. I fucking love it. It was just heartbreaking out. when I'd go, oh, no, no, I'm fine, thanks. It's like better than a pancake. I, it, I agree. I agree. It's they had chocolate sauce. Uh, and that, they were going to, they said, they caught, it was like mega loaded, they said it was going to be mega loaded. I saw that on the chalkboard, uh, mega loaded. So that was a shame. What could we do well, better? No. I mean, I could have done more open mics in the lead up, but I, you know. No, you're fine. I'm a mum. You're a mum, you're a two year old. Yeah. You, got, you know, you can be on TV last week, you're chicken. I'm tired. I'm a celebrity goggle box, I'm watching the oh, TV. Oh, yeah, you gotta watch that. I'm on the TV watching the TV, that's how busy what I am. What shows? Did you say what shows you did? Or yeah. Oh, I don't know if I'm allowed. Oh, okay, don't say that. No, probably. No, probably. When's it go to where? Uh, next week. Oh, this won't be out there. Oh, maths, um, maths, which I, I'm a, I'm a maths fan. You're a maths fan, yeah, right. Mm. Master Chef, all the classics, you know, sports package, uh, oh, Real Housewives. Oh, yeah. Oh, we watched actually the John Farnham doco. So you oh, don't watch the whole thing. Yeah, you watch bits. But yeah. I'd seen that and it's awesome. Have you seen it? No. Oh, it's awesome. You'd love you it. watch it, yeah. It's really good. Um, it's a good show, Google Box. So it's a simple show. But it's it's really show. good. Yeah, I liked it. So that we, Lloyd and I did that. Um, I know we did. We, I, I was worried about um, having a, a comedian as a partner because I thought, you know, like we. we it's just, quite unusual. Isn't it, it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it is a bit. I'm trying to think if there's any others in this. Uh, there are over. I know comedian couples overseas, but there's not that. Yeah, who here? Denise Scott's husband's a clown. Yeah. John. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I can't think of anyone. Really. There's Conchetta, who's a new comedian. Oh, she's funny. Yeah, yeah. she's really funny. And Ben, funny. her partner, Cox, and he's really funny. Oh! Too. Yeah, they're okay. a couple. I didn't know they were a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, right. But yeah, it's not that common. But because uh, I, the worry is that you would worry that you would talk about comedy at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't really. Nah. We talk, you know, we have a go- we gossip. Like, yeah, you come home from a gig and go, oh, guess what? Like, yeah. Guess who bombed? Yeah. My favourite conversation. <laughs> Guess who bombed? <laughs> Guess who bombed? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we don't actually. Does he do well? I don't know who that voice is. <laughs> does he? I only laugh because it just happened to me a lot. It's only me I'm laughing a lot. Yeah. Hey. I love watching. We all comedians love a bomb. I, I don't like it. You don't like I'm it. It's awkward. Oh, I'm Lloyd's not, a bit I'm like that. He doesn't enjoy it as no, much I as don't me. Like it. Just find it. I have to leave the room. Like, oh, oh, really? This is not good. Oh. Oh, see, I, 
There must be something evil inside of no, me that enjoys it. People have different stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I find it interesting, but I'm like. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's good for gossip, though. Yeah, it is good for gossip. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, when we turn this tape report off, we'll go to recent bombs. <laughs> yeah. Experience. Um, anyway. Yeah. Um, so. Cool. Well, keep your eyes peeled for Anne Evans, everyone. Yeah. She's coming back. Not that she went away. No. She's still on the TV. Yeah, I'm around. You're around. And Helen Bidot. 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 She'll be back. Oh, she has to come back. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. Yeah, we'll sure. of course. God, we're almost in Melbourne. We are. Time yeah. flies when you make a podcast <laughs> on the way up. Legally. Thanks, Anne. <laughs> no worries. Bye. Bye.